in the morning, uh, we started with the cube monitor and we created the example working from the internal flash. And our goal for this afternoon will be to move this uh, example, which we named the hands on number two, to the Octo SPI, that this hands on will be executed from the Octo SPI. And to uh, protect this code, which is normally readable from Octo SPI, we will use the on the fly decryption and also we will encrypt this hands on number two that nobody will be able to read it without key. Then plan for this uh, for this hands on. And uh, for this, uh, we will use the Octo SPI one, which is uh, directly connected on our board. And it's possible to see or configure this memory that way that it will be visible inside the Cortex memory space or at address 90 million. Then if we if we're referring to the 90 million, in our case today, it will be Octo SP1. There is also Octo SP2, which is on the other 70 million, and I'm missing here one zero. And this is not currently used. Enough. I think we're using it for SRAM or SDRAM, which is also connected there. But in our case, it's no Octo Octo SPI. Then this is the mystery be behind the 90, 90 millions. To be able to run the application, we can do two things. One is to modify the hands on number two to initialize the Octo SPI and then uh, modify the linker a little bit heavily. Or we do the separate thing and we will create more application which we can call bootloader. And the job of this application will be to initialize for us the Octo SPI in its size the on the fly decryption eventually and then just jump into the hands on number 2 which is directly inside the octo spi and this is the approach which i choose for this hands on and for this uh, we need to create this this bootloader and i already pre prepared a small project which we use for the start and we need to import it inside our cube ide and the name is uh, some i think called hands on number three for some it's called on the fly decryption underscore octo spy boot test then you should have inside your workspace at least the hands on number two if you have already had the hands on number three or a boot test then you don't need to import anything because you already have it in my case i don't have them then i will import them then I will select the file and import. Uh, again, we importing the existing project into workspace because I prepared the, the basic of this project. And here I should put the, the path to my, to my ecosystem workshop because there is the folder where I have the hands-ons and I want the hands-on number three, or in your case, it can be on the fly decryption boot test. Uh, okay, made my boot uh, hands on number three is here or on the fly decryption is here. I have here one mistake, then I need to rename this IOC file to have the same name as a project, then I will name it zone zero three. If in your case the project is named the boot test, then you don't need to change anything. Then this was unfortunately my mistake when we were creating the package. Uh, I will describe what this uh, hands on number three is doing. Uh, currently, it will be not possible to build because I put there the one file which using the Octo SPI. But currently, there are no Octo SPI drivers inside our project, then it will be not possible to compile. And inside the main is small routine, uh, which basically he is trying to look inside the application which is on the other 90 million and check if on the first position is a value which can be considered as a stack pointer which is the first thing which you should have at the beginning of your application or you usually have it and he checking if it's inside the ram memory and if yes he use the second uh, word because there should be the reset vector and he trying to jump on this uh, reset vector 
then this is what this small code is doing. This one, and this is the code which we have usually inside our bootloader examples and inside our uh, USB DFU examples, then or this loaders. And it's called when you're jumping from the one application into the second one. And, uh, we can open this AOC file. Please check if you have the, the both with the same name, the project and the IOC. They have the same name. And I will try to open it. I don't want to migrate. It's no, not necessary. And what I want to do, I need to add the Octo SPI memory because it's there. The Octo SPI memory basically came from the standard SPI memory when we have the chip select clock and the one data in, one data outline. And it's now a little bit involved because we have now up to eight data lines. So we can read one byte on one clock cycle, even more. Uh, we have the chip select and the clock. This is still the same. And we have the one optional additional signal for the data strobing because we are running on the higher frequency that it's good to strobe the data. And in our case, we will use the feature of the Octo SPI called DTR, which allow to read the data on the riding and the falling edge. This is also purpose of this strobing signal because he can give us information when the data are already valid. The Octo SPI one, which is uh, directly connected inside our discovery kit on this pins. This is what I check from the schematic. And our job is inside the QPMX uh, configure the same uh, situation that this the spins will be configured to the Octo SPI. This is what we will do now. And you should have opened if you open here the IOC, you should have see the same view. And I am not sure which you view you seeing here. I recommend here to select the A to Z because I can better <laughs> orient in it and select the Octo SPI one in the categories. I think it's inside the connectivity, the Octo SPI one. Then select Octo SPI one and here select the, the mode, which should be the Octo SPI. Uh, then we select the clocks, which will be taken from the port one clocks. Uh, chip select also port one chip select uh, data strobe also port one data strobe uh, data from zero to three also port one zero to three and uh, data four to seven also port one four to seven. As a result, all the sync circles with the pins inside should be green. If there is the circle with the pin inside, which is not green, then probably this one is not correct. If is this done in the addition, we here enable the on the fly decryption. We only need to select on the fly OTF deck one. It doesn't matter which you which you select in your project because they are independent unit. But in my file, which I prepared, I am using on the fly decryption one. Then please select the on the fly decryption one and only activate it. Uh, as a result, there should be the green checkbox inside the Octo SP one and on the fly decryption one. If you have it, we can store save the, the project with the diskette or control S. And the QPMX should uh, ask us if we want to generate the code and we want. And I want to switch back the perspective and he will regenerate the code. In this um, step, we should have here inside the domain of inside the hands on number three, added the Octo SPI in it and on the fly the caption in it, which is a good sign. And as a consequence, we will also have the drivers for the Octo SPI and on the fly the caption. So from this moment, it will be possible to compile the hands on number three. We can we can test it. It will be possible to build it. But unfortunately, it's uh, not enough because uh, to make the Octo SPI running, it's not uh, not so simple. Uh, we need to add some few steps because by default the Octo SPI memory it's running as a standard SPI memory. It's using one uh, data line. So what we will do 
it's good to send the com reset command to the memory to put it into the default state. Sometimes it's good to read the ID to check if it's working. And then we want to switch to the Octo SPI mode to use all eight pins, the data lines, and enable the DTR mode, which will send data and the commands on the rising and the falling edge. This is done inside this uh, small library which I prepared or the file of the octospi.c and the h and we need to only add it into our project you should see the octospi here inside the source already and we only need to add few things inside our main and for this i can use this file to copy 03 uh, i will put it uh, next to it to be visible and we need to copy the include of the octospi.h somewhere at the beginning i recommend line 25 inside the main please check that you have the main from the hands on number three and not main from the hands on number two to be sure you can click here on this on this uh, link and basically it will show you which uh, the file which you have opened here if i open the different main he will show me that I am in main inside the Hanzo number two. But I want to copy this and I want to copy this uh, Octo SPI in it and memory map in it somewhere in the main. And I recommend it uh, around line uh, 100 uh, below the user called begin two. And uh, this in it will initialize the Octo SPI mode and uh, the DTR mode. And this memory map function will switch the STM32 to know the memory, the octospay will be now linked on the address 90 million. Then after this, I should see here the content of the octospay at address 90 million. So I can save, I can build. And I want to check now what is at the address 90 million. And to be sure that I can verify that it's somehow working, I can put something at the address 90 million. And for this purpose, I prepared some uh, small bat file, which should be inside your workshop folder and inside the tools. And inside the workshop and the tools should be the bat file load test hex then we can execute this file. Please check if you used the, the cube monitor before, then unconnect and connect the board to release the connection to the ST-Link. And we can run this load uh, test hex, which using basically the command line of the cube programmer. And he will flash the content of this hex file into our Octo SPI. It's on a small routine to put something which we can recognize inside the Octo SPI. Okay, my load is done. And I can now run the debug of the hands on number three. Uh, there is nothing to change. And I should start inside the main. I will put here the breakpoint at line 104. I putting it here because then I want to open the memory, but I want to open this memory window after the Octo SPI is properly initialized because otherwise the memory window is a little bit confused. I can run the code with the, with the run or F8 and I stop here. And now inside the memory, I can check the address uh, 90 million. It should be nine and seven, seven zeros. And this view doesn't helping me to recognize what I put there, but I can here click on the new one and I will select the traditional one, or you can select also the ASCII, but the traditional one is maybe better. And I can see that I have here the ASCII translation of the content, which I put inside the Octo SPI, and I have here the text uh, we are trying to check if Octo SPI works. Then it seems that in this state, 
I can read uh, the content of the OctoSPI and uh, on the other 90 million, I, I see this, this content, which is good first step. Then seems the basic functionality of our bootloader, the initializing the OctoSPI works. So we have the situation when the OctoSPI can give us the data. And then the second second issue, I need some valid content put inside the Octo SPI. Because currently now my application, the hands-on number three, is trying to jump to Octo SPI memory, but there is only my testing text and no valid application. So now the question is what to do with the application from the hands-on number two to make it running from the Octo SPI. It's not possible only to upload it directly. We need to do some small changes. Uh, one of these changes and a very important one is that our hands-on number two is uh, created that way that he's supposed to run from the other 8 million, which will be not true anymore. We want to run from the address uh, 90 million. Then we need to change this. And this will be done inside the linker. And the second uh, issue is that uh, we need to tell this uh, hands-on number two uh, where we expect to have our interrupts. Because by default, he expecting the interrupts on the address 8 million but we want to move them to address 90 million too. So we need to add this line, which is setting this veto register, which is the register telling the core where search for the interrupt uh, vector table, the most important uh, table inside your code. And this we need to put also into the 90 million. So, we start to modifying the hands-on number two, then now open the correct hands-on, please hands-on number two. And first we open here this linker file, this is tmct2h735 or something something underscore flash dot ld, which is this uh, famous linker file. And definitely check that you have hands-on number two. It will not work if we use it for the hands-on number three. And uh, what we want to change here, we will do the small change. We will scroll up and at the line 49 should be uh, defined the sec uh, memory called the flash. And currently it's put on the others 8 million and we will be only change it to the 90 million. We will change the eight to nine zero. You should have nine and seven zeros. It's very important. If you change only eight to nine, it will not work later. You must have the nine and the seven, seven zeros. Okay, I can save this. It should be at line 49 inside this, uh, this linker file. And the second part, it's inside the main of the hands-on number two. And we will put it at the beginning of the main. I recommend the line 177. And we take here this system control bot vector set from the 2 copy 3 It will be faster. And I put it on the line 7, 177. Then from this point, after this is executed, this uh, code, this application hands-on number two can use the, the interrupts. If he used the interrupt before I call this, it will basically end up inside the interrupts from hands-on number three. This is the purpose. Otherwise, it will not work. Second possibility is also to add this inside the hands-on number three. Uh, but I think you must be sure that it's not changed anywhere in the hands-on number two, which I think we have it somewhere inside the template. Okay, then this was the one change and uh, the basic needed change. And there is the one issue which I discovered uh, later Then when we already created the package. There is the one issue that we using some board support package files for the audio, for the LCD. 
And unfortunately, these uh, packages will reconfigure the clock source from the Octo SPI1 and Octo SPI2 to PLL, which will be not an issue. In the normal situation, the issue is that the later on, when they enabling the configuring the audio, they disable this PL2. And as a consequences, it will stop the Octo SP1 and Octo SP2. In when we already running the code from the Octo SP1, then our application will basically deadlock. <laughs> then uh, this is the part which we need to correct, uh, which is accidentally put there inside the code, and we need to put it uh, corrected inside the BSP files. And it will be here. We open here the drivers, the BSP, and the discovery discovery BSPs, and here the octospa.c. And we will search the line 995. Nine hundred ninety-five. And we need to do a few changes. Ah, I already have some some old file. It's interesting because it shouldn't be here. I think you should have here the two, and you must change it to three. And the second part is that you should have here this function. I'm not sure why it is not in my case. Interesting. You should have here this function, and we need to remove it and put here the hello OK. Uh, yes, I want. Then here change the two to three, and here uh, put uh, this function which was here uh, somewhere else, and put here for example hello okay. And this will basically prevent to switching the the octo SP to PL2, but they will stay on the system clock and they are not possible to disable, which is good. Then. It, we will always run from the Octo Spare from Flash Flash without issues. Then we can build the hands on number two. And if you will check the, the build analyzer and the memory, then here the flash should change from the others 8 million to 90 million. I think it will take, uh, take him a few seconds to update. Yeah. Now it's changed to the 90 millions. So this application is prepared to run from uh, external Quad SPI. If you try to debug the hands on number two now, because the debug will upload this into our memory, uh, if you try to run the debug, uh, you will discover you will get an error. It's because he is he don't know how to download the code on the address 90 million because for the debugger or the loader which loading the memory, this memory is not known. He definitely knows the internal memories. He knows the RAM, the flash on the address 8 million, but he is not sure what is this memory and how he can put the code inside it. Then we need to tell him. And this we do if we open here the debug configuration or the run and the debug configuration. And we select here the hands on number two. This is important. We want to change it for the hands on number two. And select the debugger. Uh, scroll a little bit down. And there should be the option for the external loader. Because this is the external memory, then we use the external loader. And to tell the flashing routines how to uh, put the code inside this flash, then you can scan it. And it will show you all the external loaders which we have. Uh, they are basically the loaders for the memories which we have on our boards, because, OK, we know them. We know the configuration of the board, the paints, and all, all this all this information. And we need to select the loader for STM32H735. It's somewhere if you put here this uh, this uh, this bar to the middle, then it should be uh, here, somewhere inside the middle of your screen. I will show it again. That is somewhere in the middle. 
the two five or three five it's now doesn't make any any difference then they should be the completely the same but we have the three five then we select the three five and after we select this then the part of the code which putting it's loading the code it's now know how to put the code inside the address nine uh, nine million this file is basically small program which uh, was created for this uh, microcontroller and for this memory, for the specific configuration for the discovery kit. And it consists basically the routines for the initialization, read, write, and arrays. And uh, this can be, we have the training uh, showing how to create your own loader in case that you have your own uh, board and your own external memory and your own device. Then for this, you can create this loader and you can download the content to this memory with the debugger. OK, I run the debug and I have no error. It seems that is uh, somehow, uh, somehow working. Then the debugging is uh, running. And you will probably see that uh, he is somewhere uh, inside some disassembly and he cannot show you what is the code. Uh, this is because how the GDB server is enabling the debugging and also some other IDEs. When they reset the device, basically after the uploading the code, and they directly put the program counter into start of this application of the hands-on number two, which is not precisely the flow which we want because we wanted first to execute the hands-on number three, which will initialize the Octo SPI and then we can jump into the hands-on number two. And this we can do if we stop here or the suspend the execution and uh, we click on the reset. Here the reset, uh, the triangle with the arrow and it will reset the, the chip, which means that the first is executed hands-on number three, because this is inside the flash. Then hands-on number three is jumping to hands-on number two. And we see that we are currently inside the hands-on number two. And if I look somewhere inside the registers, maybe I should see that the program counter is starting on the address 90 million. Then currently this code is executed from Octo SPI. And if I put here the, the 90 million and uh, also change the BSP, then the code should, should be normally running and I should uh, end up somewhere here inside the benchmark. Okay, so my code is running. If I check it now with the cube monitor, which I have still still opened from the morning, and I think I will try to connect. I will say stop and run the, my board, and I should be able to connect. Yeah, seems that connection is successful. And I see that without cache, the performance of the Octo SPI is uh, pretty low. Okay, it's it's uh, expectable because it's uh, very slow, very small bandwidth comparing the um, internal flash. And if I enable the cache, it should cover me the the disadvantage of the Octo SPI pretty pretty well. And I can check the situation when I start to offload the, the cache. But this was only for the for the testing. Uh, again, this is not a normal code which we created for the for the hands-on number two, which is not uh, normal application. The normal application more is more linear, and even the linear code, it's pretty good handled by the Octo SPI. But the jumping around the memory, this is the issue, and this is usually the main focus of the of the cache. So that seems that in my case, the execution from the Octo SPI works pretty well. We definitely manage to put our code inside the Octo SPI and we managed to create our simple bootloader. 
so this is very good good progress uh, now the issue is that everyone who have this loader which we use or uh, will unsolder the octospa memory uh, everybody can read its content and can use this content again because they can understand it because they see directly the readable the valid data then we will try to protect this uh, this content inside the hands on uh, inside the hands on number two to be more secure and for this reason we will use the on the fly decryption on the fly decryption is basically using the AES and the basic AES uh, ACB mode is doing that we have the AES unit we have the key and we put there some encrypted data and we get the decrypted data or text back but we using something called the CTR mode which is a little bit more complicated but give us more advantage because we using the key but basically we are not decoding the data or the instruction or the code we decoding the something called the initialization vector or this is my uh, how to say how i imagining it and the initialization vector is composed from some uh, values called the non serve and the version these are values which we can select how we want it's the similar to the key how you select them they will they will exist and there is one value which belongs to the region uh, i selected for our purpose region number one because the octo sp have the the on the fly decryption is possibility to use up to four region but i'm using region one and the second part of this initialization vector is the address which is the address which we want to decode this is the value which is changing with the address for the 90 million will be the address 90 million for the higher address the address will change and this is the value which will be decoded and it's good because when we ask the octo sp for the address 90 million he will immediately start in the same time to start this decoding and when the octo sp finally give us the data for the 90 million we simply do the xor and we have immediately the data to use then the slow uh, and the delay with the decryption will be minimal and i was not able to measure any which is good for us so we need to add the decryption and this is done uh, with the file which i used the on octosp.c we only need to add this on the fly decryption in it and what this function do it basically uh, set the key which i select as a one two three four seven eight and then it's setting the initialization vector so he putting this uh, nonce values and this version this is this uh, this values which we can select how we want i selected the a5 c3 and the version abcd and the parameter of the on the fly decryption is which location will be covered with the on the fly decryption and in our case it will be a region of the 90 million because this is where it's our octo spi one the octo spi decryption will work then we only need to add this into our code so i will here go back into the main inside the hands-on number three and i will here the copy this octo spi uh, decryption in it somewhere at the line 102 if you have the similar numbering and i can i can uh, build the project now and after this is executed then on the address 90 million he will always try to decrypt the data from the octo spi which is good I can test it by running the hands-on number three. And what I will see, I will probably see nothing because currently inside the Octo SPI is my hands-on number two. And he will basically try to decrypt this hands-on number two. But issue is that this hands-on number two is not encrypted at all. Then if he try to decrypt it, then he will create complete nonsense. Then if I look on the address 90 million, then 
On the first address, I should see the stack pointer value, which is somewhere inside the RAM. And I see that the first value is uh, BD something, which is far from the RAM on both directions. Then this this code was maybe decrypted, but uh, I'm not getting any valuable result. Then I need to somehow modify the hands-on number two, and I need to create the encrypted version of this binary. So I need to change somewhere the binary and create an encrypted version. The question is how to encrypt the hands-on number two in addition to be useful for our decryption. And for this, I prepared one bot file, which will do some steps. Uh, basically, I'm using for the encryption of this bin binary of this uh, hands-on number two, the open SSL tool, which I will give him the key and the initialization vector. But the issue is that the open SSL tool require a little bit different by byte order than it's inside our binary. It's usually a difference between microcontroller word and PC software. Then I need to reverse the bytes, run the open SSL, reverse the bytes back. And uh, then I'm using the tool which will create from the, the hex file from the binary. Then for this, I will give him the address where I want this hex file to start, which I giving the 90 million. And at the end of this binary, uh, he will program everything with the Q programmer to our M memory automatically. So for this, I prepared this bot file, which is inside the tool, which is the encrypt underscore bot, and it requires as an input parameter the path to the file, which I want to encrypt the name of this file. I need to give him the key, which I want to use inside the open SSL, the initialization vector and address. We can run this manually from the command line, but it will be a little bit annoying to run it each time when we change the hands-on number two. Then we can make some automatic version and we can use Eclipse to do this all for us. Then we need to convince Eclipse with some modifications. And first is that I need here this, this name, which I, I selected as a NK path. You can copy it from the two copy zero three, and I will put it by inside the hands on number two by clicking right click on this project and I will select the properties. And I will here go to the C, C++ build and inside the build variable. And I will add new variable called the NK path. I will select the type as a, as a file and I will browse these files and the file should be inside my workshop, inside the tools and there will be the nk bin un, uh, underscore bin dot bat. Then this is the bat file which will do for me the encryption. And it basically, if I use inside the Eclipse this NK path name, it will refer it with this, this long uh, value and he can execute it. Then I will add it like this. And I will apply it. OK, I hope it's it's OK. Now I can close it and I will here copy the last uh, command which I have inside my to copy is very long and a little bit complicated so I recommend to copy it and we again put it inside the hands-on number two and inside the properties and I now put it inside the settings and inside the settings you should have uh, something called the build steps and this is possibility which you can call some functions or the binaries, uh, the bin files, sorry, or the bat files before the compilation starts or some post build steps which you can use some uh, bat files after. 
the compilation finished and this is what we will do. Then we will put here this long command and what this will do. This dollar and the bracket means that what is inside will be executed and we have here the encrypt path, which is our, uh, sorry, our uh, build variable, which it's linked to the, to the bat file. Then he will know the bat file and he will execute him. And if you remember from this from this file, the first parameter is the path to the file which we want to convert and the, his its name. This is the second one. Then this pwd is the path to the bin file. And the second parameter is the project name, which is the name of the of the binary. If you want to know how I discovered that this is the project name that here inside the build variables, you can show all the variables and somewhere here will be PWD. And I know that this is this path to the debug and inside this will be the project name hands on number two. Then uh, decide how I discover what to put there. Okay. Then this will start the binary and the fourth parameter is supposed to be my key which is, and it's a little bit uh, inverted key because unfortunately how I told you that PC tool interprets the values a little bit differently than my code. Then inside my code, I selected the key as one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight on the first place. But unfortunately inside for this open SSL, the order is a little bit changed. And this one, two, three, four, seven, eight is at the end. Then if I uh, compare it inside our IDE, then it fits that one, two, three, four, seven, eight is at the end. And the fifth parameter is my initialization vector, which is again composed from this uh, non-serve values from the first one and the second one. Again, the order is a little bit, a little bit changed. Then be careful. You need to switch the LSB and MSB basically. There is the four zeros, which is uh, defined by our reference manual for the on the fly decryption. Then it should be always zero. There is the value for the version, the ABCD. It should be the same ABCD. Uh, there is the region which is used in our application and I selected the region one. And the last one, it's the value of the address which we will use divided by 16. Then it's, I think, only 9 million. And the last parameter is the, is the address where we put, want to put this hex file, which is this 90 million. So this is the this is the mystery behind this line. Then this is the key, and this is the this is the initialization vector. And they should match the values inside our project. If not, the decryption will be not successful. Okay, we can save it, apply, and I can try now to build the hands-on number two uh, build project. And I will check, compilation is done, and then it was run automatically my script. You see the, there is the written encryption start, uh, encryption end, then I have some cleanup, I'm creating the hex file, then I created the hex file and I'm running the Q programmer, which will upload this encrypted hex file into the Octo SPI. Then now, after this build, I have inside Octo SPI the valid code, which is encrypted. And I should be able to, to see if the, if the result is co correct, then I can run the bug for hands-on number three again. And see if there are any any issues i again put the breakpoint on the 105 and i open the memory oh, double click 
upon the traditional. And you see then the comparison between the previous attempt. It seems that on the first uh, address, or the ninth million, it's something 24. And this value is basically the RAM. Then it seems that this value is for me valid. And the older values should be the position of the interrupt vectors. First is the reset vector, non-maskable interrupt, hard fault handler, uh, bus fault handler maybe, and other faults. And they all starting with the 90 million. Then it seems that definitely this is for me the valid, valid. It looks like that I have on the address 90 million valid code. Then I can decrypt correctly and I can execute the valid code with the decryption, which is good. Then I can close this one. The issue can be now, if you try to debug hands-on number two, you will discover that it's not working how we want it and it's not possible to debug the hands-on number two. Uh, why? Because the build, the building will create for us the the encrypted hex file and also the build will upload the hex file into Octo SPI. But if we try to uh, debug, he unfortunately take the hex file which is not encrypted and he will again rewrite the content with the Octo SPI and then the decryption will stop working again. Then we need to somehow prevent it. And we can do that again inside the debug configuration. Inside, uh, we will switch to the hands on number two. And we can here modify the startup of the debugging. And we can tell him that we don't want to upload this L file because we know that this is not encrypted. Then this is not good for us. Then we can here edit it and we can uncheck the download. So he will not download this code anymore because it's done with our build. And if I click on the debug, I will be able to debug encrypted code inside the Octo SPI. And if I running, And I should be somewhere inside my main. Yeah, I am inside the main and I should be able to step. Yeah. And if I check the registers, I should see that I am inside the Octo SPI on the other 90 millions. And even with the caption. So it seems that my, my decryption is working. I can also check my demo inside the node thread. It should work, I hope it's still working. And uh, basically when I measure this, I was not able to see any, any difference compared to uh, the code without the caption. Then this was always the same. It's because how the OctoSP work, because the OctoSP works that I need to send the command I need to send the address, then wait some dummy cycles before I get the data back. And during this time, he is able to decode this address, this initialization vector. And in the time when I get the data, he have the result of the decryption and he simply do the XOR and I get the data immediately without any delay. So this was the reason why I was not able to see any, any difference. I have here the results. Also, I create some small graph showing how is the how is the performance measurement. Also, be be careful with the performance. It's a little bit tricky, but because this is not maximal. How to say maximal performance of the core? It's usually the setup which we created, and I think definitely it's possible to squeeze the performance even more by the optimizing the usage of the memories and the other stuff. But uh, for us, we can refer it as a performance. <laughs> then uh, in our case, uh, the without cache, the flash was running always 73%. 
and when the cache was enabled, we get on the 100% and when we stop losing the cache, the, the performance drops slowly to 73%. Uh, when we use the Octo SPA without the cache, we run always on the 8%. eight And if we stop uh, using the, if we was were not able to use the the cache, the performance was dropping to this eight eight percent. But be careful again. This this code which we created is a little bit really unusual. And in the normal situation, I was never seeing the code uh, which work like like the ours, which is more linear, which is better handled by the by the cache. So uh, if you will decide where you allocate the cache, I would definitely recommend to allocate it to most of the cache to the Octo SPA if if possible. Because the flash performance is still good, because the drop of the for the flash with the performance is maybe 25%, but with the with the external memory is maybe 92%. And it's usually better to cover external memory with the with the cache. To decide which which memory will use the cache, you can uh, change it here with the configuring the unit called the MPU, called the memory protection unit, which can also set the behavior of the cache memory. Uh, here are also the values which I was not able to see any difference where I used the on-the-fly decryption for the Octo SPI and not using it, then the behavior was completely the same then this was no not the difference for me and uh, only to see the bandwidth of the of the octo sp it's currently running on on the 91 megahertz and i reading data on the rising and falling edge which means it's multiplied by two uh, but don't forget that you need to set with this also the commands also the that uh, the addresses and also wait for dummy cycles. Then the real benefit of the of the Octo SPI is, is much uh, lower. Okay. So if I summarize what what he did, we were able to change the hands-on number two to run from the from the Octo SPI, and we were able to and the on-the-fly decryption, when we were not able to see any difference with and without on-the-fly decryption. We checked that the, definitely the Octo SPI performance is much better when we're using the cache, because uh, this is the main purpose of the M7, I believe, to use the cache and mainly for the external memories, because otherwise it was not make no sense to use the external memories for the code. For the data, it's okay, but for the code, it was tragic. And we were we were checking what is the difference of the of the drop when we start to offloading the Octo SPA memory from the out from the cache. Okay, then thank you.